Welcome to today's podcast uh, episode of the REACH podcast Startup Stimmen. In this podcast episode, um, my guest is Michiel Schäfer. And Michiel, very warm welcome to your podcast session here at Slushed, live uh, in our studio on campus. Um, I would ask you to introduce yourself personally to our audience. Who are you? What are you doing? Why are you here today at Slushed? Well, the, the last question is, why am I here? I'm here as president of the European Innovation Council, and we will deal with that more longer afterwards. Um, my background, I'm 59. I have a PhD in uh, geography. I studied regional innovation systems, uh, mainly in textiles and clothing. So I have uh, a professional background in, in, in textiles, polymers, ICT and clothing, um, mainly managing projects, and I have, for a long period of time, written proposals, so writing proposals for clients. We are here now in Twente, in the east of the Netherlands, and most of my clients were in the east of the Netherlands. So I'm all, this is also a bit my, my, my home region. Um, and uh, 10 years ago, I was elected in, in the regional parliament, and also I was also a regional minister. So I have also, let's say, an academic, a business, and a political background. And uh, that, I think, qualified me to become president of the European Innovation Council. Very interesting combination. Thank you very much and thanks for being here today. I would like to start with our traditional uh, entry question. Who or what inspires you personally the most? And my daughters. And, and the future of my daughters. I mean, do, will my daughters and maybe their children... Uh, live in a livable on livable climate uh, livable planet yeah and a livable and livable planet means i think the biggest challenge is to have a, a climate uh, well, not a climate neutral yeah a climate neutral planet where we basically are able to have a modern lifestyle but in balance with what the earth can can give and that is a huge technological challenge not only in inventing new things but mainly in scaling up things that have been developed here in universities that require substantial capital, substantial money to, co to get to the market. Cool. And how, did, how does your work at the European Innovation Council contribute to this big goal you have in mind? Yeah, well, I present in, in the presentation this afternoon, the, there's the famous valley of death. Mm -hmm. So universities develop interesting things. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, yeah, to scale up, it's a bit, very dangerous stage where you need substantial people, money, access to the market, Uh, and already for a long time, in, in my, all my activities, uh, I identified that as a, as, an, as a real issue. How, how can we, how, however, whether it's with big companies' money or with public money through universities or public money through loans and equity, I will come back on that, mm -hmm. how can we provide the financial conditions that the technology scale up to really become solutions for, for the planet? Because too much stays here, and too long we have thought that, well, if we only fund an uh, invention, the market will pick it up by itself, and the, the market is not picking up by itself. So we need to find something, and the EIC does that. We need to find financial mechanisms to provide substantial funds for startups to help to scale up these solutions. I see. Makes sense. Uh, or early stage startups at REACH also often um, leave our programs facing the mentioned valley of death. So what do you think ecosystems have to provide to the startups to um, master those valleys? You already mentioned um, mm -hmm. some of them, but what, what, what is the m most dangerous factor they, they have to face, in your opinion? Well, there, there are two stages which are not dangerous and, and that are important. So I'm, I'm going to mention those first. First, you need, on a regional level, what the Germans call very well a Gründerskultur, mm -hmm. which is not self-standing. It's not. Uh, so I think the Netherlands has more Gründerskultur than Germany has. I would agree, actually. Uh, so that's Sadly. the first thing. You, you need the seedbeds, an atmosphere in which maybe you have friends doing easier things, but that you feel, let's say, in an environment where other people have preferred to start a company rather than being a civil servant or working in a big corporation. So that's, a, let's say, the breathing ground. And the second one is, and that's where universities are essential, the big challenges are, are highly technological challenges. So you need all the, also an environment in which, and their Germany is better than the Netherlands, that where uh, engineering, technology, um, understanding the problems of scale, of the interaction of techniques is, 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 is appreciated. So uh, let's say an engineering c culture. 
And that's the second one with, let's say, the facilities where you can test out. So clean rooms, uh, expensive laboratory with microscopes. Um, so university cities play a very important role providing the second element, mm. uh, having an, an environment where, where, where people can test things out. And what is also important is, because we are the icing on the cake, you need also local funding instruments where a starter can get 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000 euros. And that is something that has to come locally. Locally, either from angel investors or from public funds, um, because we provide the next step. So most of the startups we help are five, they're not, even not technically startups, they're five to 10 years old. Mm. So they have, have, they have an ID, the ID has been tested, they have, they have a pilot or a small demonstrator and they need millions to really test on a large scale mm. or they need millions to build, to build a facility to make it on a large scale. So they're already scale-ups. So kind yeah, of, so basically we call them startups, but in mm -hmm. reality they are scale-ups. Uh, so they, but they are still they still have to go through the valley of death. I mean, so they, with small funding, they have become mm. they, they got down, and now they have to go through the, the difficult stage of uh, yeah of, of investing sums, uh, and where there's no certainty that that the market will pick it up. There's still a substantial technology or market risk. It stays a roller coaster ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And on the other hand, why, why could, should public funding do that? Because maybe the company will fill, but they, ha they fill by having employed 50 people that have learned a lot of things. So often people from those companies that fill start up their own companies and then you strengthen again this goodness culture. So, well, there's, no, there's nothing wrong in failing. And you can start again or your people start something. So you need this kind of ecosystem in which uh, starting up, scaling up, failing, succeeding is, is becoming normal. That, and therefore, let's say, losing sometimes one company is for the person a drama, mm -hmm. maybe the, the shareholders as well, but for the public, it's okay, but it has contributed to, work, to, to create an ecosystem. That's an interesting thing you're mentioning. So accepting flaws and even failures um, yeah. is an important thing we could probably all improve in. What do you think? How can we, as part of the ecosystem, uh, support our startups in managing those phases of founding? But well, what is very important is that, that um, uh, especially first-time starters, or um, they never succeed alone. And they should also accept that, that if they want to succeed, they should be willing to accept outsiders in. So they should accept public funding, but they should accept other private funding. They should accept that they dilute their own shareholds. If they really dream of being rich on their own, they often fail. So they often fail the first time. The second time they discover, yes, I have to do it with others and then I succeed. <laughs> then you sell and you have a reasonable capital. And the third time you have enough money and you could do it on your own and you know how the tricks work. Uh, so, 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 and the ecosystem is important in finding, okay, who can I trust? Very important, trust. Mm -hmm. And who is complementary? Who has skills that I don't have? So you must know as a starter, I'm strong on this, I'm weak in that. So I'm going to look for people who are strong that bring diversity to, my, to the skills base. Mm -hmm. That's also important. And that's a bit different in the Netherlands or in Germany, but or in Slovenia and German in the Netherlands. In Germany, you can still think, okay, Germany is large enough. I can start off with a German market. In the Netherlands, that's risky. I mean, if you do, if you're in quantum technology in the Netherlands, forget it. There's no Dutch market for quantum technology. You have to do it European. Um, but it's also, let's say, the openness to other countries. And Germany is a bit d a difficult one. The Netherlands, well, we have to speak English, so that's also an openness to the world. But I think networking is very important. Be open to others, share, uh, and organize it in a way that you're fast. And so that the sharing should contribute to having quicker solutions because you share it with others. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's uh, very important yeah. in all terms of founding to keep in mind for startups, I think. Yeah. And, what is all, and what is also important for, um, well, here we are sit I'm sitting here in Enschede, 20, 500,000 people. Munster is... Yeah, I think three, 300 but, or something. Okay, yeah. but take, take the areas yeah. around you. I have also half a million. That's not huge. Huh? So, so mm -hmm. um, make choices. So a region should say, okay, critical mass, we will attain that in these and these technologies. And if you're not good in it, well, go somewhere else. They are better. Huh? So, and that's quite some tough for lo local politicians to say, okay, we're not good in it. Let's mm -hmm. not do it. 
they, so, 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 so sometimes you have to make these choices. So Twente has been very good at making very sharp choices. Mm -hmm. So in photonics, Twente is one of the best places in Europe. Very and Dresden, mm -hmm. for example, is a bit larger than, than Münster. Dresden has also been very good at making choices. Mm -hmm. um, and that requires also, let's say, a um, an environment in which making choices uh, is strengthened. So with uh, so that politicians don't say, yeah, but you forget me. I, I'm also there. Yeah, yeah okay. But mm -hmm. If you do that, you are better better off if you go to Essen or yeah. yeah. Yes, that's a yeah. good one. So making strong decisions. Yeah, and that's quite important because I understood that you that Notre Dame Westfalen is building up a. A system of hubs around starters, mm -hmm. so it's important that these these hubs also specialize mm -hmm. and also cooperate together. So okay, then if you do this, yes. for example, in 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 the, in this Eastern Netherlands, Twente is very strong in technology, in high tech technology, photonics, for example, and not in food. In food, you go to Wageningen; it's eighty kilometers. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. a nutritional scientist, so I uh, so I used to work as one before I yeah. became a startup yeah. coach. So yeah. I, I heard Wageningen uh, also when studying yeah. itself. So yeah. they they have the knowledge um, yeah. that's needed. So yeah. and every every different uh, city and university does yeah. right. So yeah. specific yeah. choosing specifically where you where you start and where you get your information yeah. and your your network. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, as an anecdote, I was with a German ambassador in Wageningen once. Mm -hmm. And he asked, why are you going to, to study and start your company here? Because you all can also go to Bonn and Stuttgart, which are good universities. And I, yeah, but here you learn to set up a company. <laughs> and here you need to you learn to work with methods that companies use. Because Unilever is on the campus, uh, Cam Friesland Campina is on the campus. So that's also an important element of, of, uh, of ecosystems, is having ecosystems in which big companies are present as well. Mm. As test grounds, as locations, as possibly acquirers and that they buy they buy up the startups yeah various partners yeah. um they are important yeah. for yeah. the startup journey yeah, yeah. i would agree cool and it's, and it's, uh, uh, most cities type munster have the conditions to to build up that but why um or, or where do we think where could we improve uh, for example as city of munster or ecosystem uh, local um, ecosystem of Münster. That's hard to say. I mean, what is because <laughs> very I, specific. Because I know. <laughs> I have, that's hard to say. Uh, what you see, what I see, let's say, in the successful, the successful clusters come out of, of a crisis. Mm -hmm. So if you have a crisis and you feel the weakness, then you feel also what you should do to be strong. And Twente is a good example. Twente was the textile region, and had a. I'm from a textile family. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a massive crisis in the 1960s and 70s. The university was born as a, an alternative growth model. And the region and the university invested heavily in, in, in promoting an alternative growth model. Because the, the, the region was dying, people were leaving, uh, the youth was not staying here. Um, Eindhoven is a bit the same. Eindhoven was hit by a dramatic reduction of employment at Philips. The bankruptcy of of Duff making trucks, so there was all kind of okay. We are losing our economy, mm. um, and that helps. And so often these crisis cities have more potential to 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 regenerate than those cities where there's a there's a big big legal sector, there's a provincial capital, uh, so there's a big university hospital. There's no risk. And Münster has has also textile history, mm -hmm. so could could use this this crisis and transformation logic, but Westfalen has also a bit, let's say, a slightly conservative agricultural background. So, well, no, everything is goes well. Why should we? Yeah. Because it always did. So? <laughs> because it always did. We always go did. Well. Yeah, yeah, and and that's let's say that let's say the, the kind of let's say self uh, self confidence. Mm -hmm. Attitude is not really helping, let's say, either Grunders culture and not also, let's say, feeling of we have to prioritize, choose, be sharp. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Thank you. It's also in contrast. I mean, Dresden has this kind of, also a kind of crisis. Huh? As we are slowly heading to the end of the yeah. podcast, I would uh, offer you the great chance to um, do some promotion on public funding maybe because some of or startups are struggling getting into uh, the vibe of public funding because yeah. there are many things that need to be accepted when applying for yeah. public funding so 
maybe you want to use the chance to promote public funding because I, in my opinion, think it's a great chance yeah. for startup, especially yeah. early stage startup, incubation startup. So maybe you can find better words. Okay. Yeah, I mean, public funding is 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 often at three levels. Huh? It's either in Germany, it would be typically at the lender level. Now, most funding instruments are at the regional lender level, so not at the You have national instruments and you have European instruments. And generally, they scale in size. Huh? So the more you go to Europe, the larger they are. Mm -hmm. So basically, to be very blunt to the starters, we as Europe, we don't have grants below 700, 800,000 euros. So we come either because you have identified directly the need of such tickets, and not 800, but rather two and a half million in grants and up to 15 million mm. in equity. So either you have identified immediately, well, whatever we are going to do, it's going to be expensive. We need those kind of tickets. Or you have tested, let's say, locally with smaller grants and you have to go to the next step, the, grant, the big ones. And then we come into play. And why, why do we come into play? Because often in a region or in the country, you don't have enough critical mass. So the regions are afraid of picking up big tickets because you might make a mistake. You don't have enough comparisons to say it. We have a huge comparison database. Uh, we get more than uh, 3,000 applications a year. Uh, we, we fund about uh, 300 to 400 a year. So we, have, we, we can much, and we can mobilize consult uh, evaluators, uh, coaches at the European level. So we, the main instrument for, for scale-ups is the accelerator. And the accelerator provides up to 2.5 million euro grants, non-diluted, and up to 15 million euros in equity. So the European Commission becomes a, sharehold, a shareholder. The European Union becomes a shareholder of the, of the startup or scale-up. And that also brings other things that, um, let's say, we, we bring patience. So we, we allow to remain 5 to 10 years in the company. So we give stability a long-term perspective, especially in markets that have a long-term perspective. And the energy market is not a fast market. The medical market is not a fast market. Materials require perseverance. So, so we are not there for all the scale-ups. If people say, I need money in two or three months because next year this, yeah, that's not, we're, not, we're not agile enough to, for that. We will never be agile for that, simply because of the, the number of applicants we get. But we are a very good testing ground for those startups that have a very thorough problem mm. that will last for long that requires thorough solutions and when the solutions are there they're also let's say they have a long st phase of let's say rolling out so we are patient and thorough that's, that's very german i think <laughs> sounds familiar yeah. <laughs> very well thank you very much okay so you mastered our entry question and we traditionally close with the following question What is the most important thing you have learned from your general work experience and how has it changed you? Well, the, for me, the most fundamental one and for my daughters as well, make clear choices and, st and, and stick to them, but in a flexible way. And so, so have a strategy for your life and be open to, 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 be, and be open to adjust your strategy, but not change it. Very good one to close. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll keep that in mind. Yeah, All you're right. welcome. Thank you, Michiel, for very much for being here today, um, for being a guest at uh, the podcast studio uh, at Slushed 2023. I wish you a great evening at the event. We're heading over to the open networking area. And uh, thank you very much, dear listeners, for listening to this podcast session today. Thank you. Thank you.